first. Yeah. Yeah. Then get together. There you go. That's what happens when you wear the mask and this microphone. It tears it up. We have come into this house. We have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in here and let everybody leave this place saying I was glad when they said unto me let us come to the house of the Lord Amen. Lord we just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Amen. you may be seated excuse me while I make adjustments but when you have the mask on and then you take it off and all my scotch tape comes loose in the back so it's good to see you here. It's good to have you with us. Yeah, give yourself a hand. So uh, if you're online and watching us, if you're ill, stay home. If you're on at ease, stay home. But if you come, want to be come and worship with us, we are open and we have all kinds of room. We also have direct TV in the back with sound. And it's all set up there. It's good to have people all the way from Texas with us. Amen. Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I knew he's down south there somewhere. So. 
good to have with us. Well, praise the Lord. We're just having a good time, man. Ralphie yes. has a few words of wisdom for us this morning. <laughs> well, today I was going to say, you know, I read the Bible every day now. And, uh, and the Bible that says, without faith, it's impossible to, fl to it's impossible to please God. Amen. And uh, everything in that Bible, we have to believe. That's God's word. And, and if God says that's a sin, that's a sin. If God says that's wrong, that's wrong. That's what Christians believe. And, and I don't know where everybody else stands, but that's how it goes with me. If it's in the Bible, I believe it. Amen. And another thing, all you people that are looking at this and not are not in church, you need to come to church. We got a lot of room here. Amen. Okay, let's say a prayer, okay? Lord, I just thank you for this day, Lord. And I thank you for all the people that did come, Lord. It's a blessing to see them again, Lord. And just keep that virus away from us, Lord. Please, Amen. God, I pray that, Lord. And I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Rock. Well, we got a lot of folks that are still ill and sick, and uh, Bruce was supposed to be here this morning, or Brian was supposed to be here this morning. His mother just passed away, and so we're going to, she's back east, but we're going to pray for their family. A lot of people are still home and sick, and a lot of people just afraid and in fear of this virus. And uh, so we're just going to come against all of that in the name of Jesus and praise the Lord. Amen. All right. It's time to get back. Time to worship God. All we got, right. We got one who came a long way to to come to church today. All right. That's one I just said. You, you were probably napping when I was talking. To you. And it's good to have Cal and Char back up here. Huh? Yeah. We didn't know when that was happening, and, and Mike also. We remember Mike. Yes. His, his beloved half has graduated ahead of him, and yeah. so we want to remember him and Steph and the whole family too. Yeah. So uh, the Lord is good, though, right? Yes, He is. So let's just pray one more time. Pray for all of those. And anybody have a prayer request? Yes. I pray for my sister and her family in Texas during that storm, and they haven't had any power for about a week since it started. Wow. Yeah, the state of Texas is really taking it on the chin. Yeah. All right. Let's pray. Father, again, we just thank you so much for your love and your care. We thank you for being so good to us. Lord, we just ask you to minister to us in Jesus' name. We ask you to touch our nation, our world. Texas, Lord, it seems to be the vocal point of this great storm. Lord, we just ask you to minister to these people. Be with each and every one. Lord, we know that you know everything and you know all these different situations. So just minister to us right now. Minister to Brian and his loss and to Mike. Lord, we just thank you again for being such a good God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if you're in your Bible, we're going to get right into the Word this morning. Is that all right? Now, if you're worried about the offering... We have a great big box back there, and you can fill it. But I don't want to hear it when I pick it up. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? You put that folding stuff in there, or those checks, that'd be, just be fine. So we're trying to uh, cut that down and be careful with the sanitary things and all that good stuff. So the offering is right back there. So, all right? All right, well, take your Bibles in and turn to Psalms 22 or get out your pencil and pen and get ready to take some notes because we're going to get into the, into the Word this morning. I'm going to talk about this morning joyful expectations. Joyful expectations, okay? And uh, while I was in the Army years ago, I was stationed on a little island out of the end of the Aleutian chain. It was called the Black Pearl. But this island was unlike, it was not a tropical paradise. In fact, it had no trees. It was two by four, and when I got my orders that I was going to be transferred there, stationed there for a year, I looked it up in the encyclopedia to see what I was getting into, and it says, undoubtedly the home of the worst weather in the world. <laughs> That's what the Encyclopedia Britannica said. 
And so uh, we used to tease the new guys when they'd come on the base. We'd say, yeah, they'd ask us about the climate and what it was. We'd tell them summer came on a Wednesday last year. <laughs> and it lasted about an hour or two. And that was about the size of it, you know. This was an island, but we were all glad to get off of the island. So when you got near the end of your tour, we would get excited about getting home and about what it would be like to be back with your loved ones and your friends and your family and all those things that we're familiar with. And so we would even create what we call short timers calendars. Anybody here ever make up a short timers calendar? Till we get within that 30 days or down in the single digits, we'd have that calendar and we'd X off every day. Why? Because we were wanting to get out of there and we were excited about getting home. So then your imagination would run away with you on what would happen when you got home and you had all these joyful expectations about leaving there and getting home. Well, that's the same kind of joy that you and I are supposed to have when we think about coming to church. I was glad when they said unto me, Psalms 122 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The word joy and glad, Webster says that emotion, joy means emotion or excitement caused by acquisition. You see, I was acquired by Jesus Christ. He paid the debt for my sin. He bought my salvation. He purchased your salvation. So you should have the joy of the Lord because he has paid for you already. You are without sin. That should make you happy. Yeah. Yeah. I said that should make you happy. Because yeah. he's paid the price. He has acquired you. Wow. That's why you have joy. Expectation. Anticipation of good. Now the Greek out of the New Testament says this. Gladness. Being excited. Being ex exceedingly full. Full, fullness, having complete, full joy, gladness, or delight about the presence and the future. You see, you can have the joy of the Lord now, here on earth. What have you thought much about the joy of the Lord when you meet him in heaven face to face? Some of you are scared to death. That's why some of you out there aren't in church because you're afraid to come to church. <laughs> I guess the thing you don't believe, God knows where you're at now. <laughs> but he knows where you're at. Amen. 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 Fullness of oneself. Not just to be happy, but to be complete. See, to have the joy of the Lord is to be complete because he completes us. And because we're all members of the family of God, we complete one another when we come together. That's why God, Jesus said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of so miss. It's important for us to have fellowship. Amen? Amen. Amen? All right. To be complete, completeness. If you want joy, say it with me. If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus, let Jesus come into your hearts. Psalms 122, 1, I just quoted. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why would you say that? Why would you say, why did they go to the house of the Lord? Why did, were they happy to go to the house of the Lord? To worship God. To worship, first of all, to worship and praise the Lord. To worship and thank him for what he's done for me. Look what the Lord has done. And we can joy, have joyful expectation about the future. Because if this is where we're going to start, where are we going to be next week? Because you're going to run home and tell all your friends, right? Amen. That it's time to go worship. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 61.10 says, I was greatly, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he has clothed me with a garment of salvation. How many of you are saved and been born again? If you don't raise your hand, we're going to have an altar call right now. <laughs> Boy, that got some hands up there in a hurry. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah. He has clothed me with a garment of salvation. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you should thank him for that. You should be complete with that. You should be happy for that. You should know that without a shadow of a doubt. Right. That you're right with God. Amen. You're at peace with God. Thank you, Lord. I'm complete in God. Amen. Not that I myself and my flesh am perfect, but I'm in Jesus Christ. I am perfect. Amen. So I praise the Lord because he's covered me. Well, the garment means that he's covered me with salvation. I'm complete. God doesn't do a halfway job. That's right. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. Oh, a lot of people get nervous with that. I used to have a gentleman that come to church here when I first came in particular. Had to educate him over the years. But he just resisted the thought about being holy or righteous. Even though he'd been raised in the church. And he didn't understand that we're growing in Jesus Christ. Each and every one of you, you may not be holy within yourself, but when you're in Jesus, you're baptized into who? Into Jesus. And if you're baptized into Jesus, who covers you? His blood. God doesn't see you outside of Jesus. He sees you inside of Jesus. If I was to drop a coin in this glass, and the coin being me, out here when I'm out by myself, God sees me and sees my need. But when I'm in Jesus, how does he see me? He sees me through Jesus. And I am pure and I'm holy. I'm even righteous. Why? Because I'm covered with the blood. And because I'm covered with the blood of the Lamb, I have joy, real joy, Amen. wonderful joy. And I don't have it just now, but I have joyful expectation for even the future for what's going to take place. I don't fear God. I reverence God. Amen. I'm not terrified of God. I reverence God. I'm his son. Right. I'm his child. Right. Are you? Are you at peace with God? Yes. Yes. So the first reason why we come and we say it was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord because I'm going to go and I'm going to meet my friends and I'm going to meet the rest of the body of Christ and I'm going to celebrate Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I'm going to celebrate God the Father, the Son, yeah. and the Holy Ghost. I'm going to celebrate yeah. the Creator of heaven and earth. I'm going to celebrate my God who heals and who is saved. I'm going to celebrate. Amen. My God. That's the first reason I come. And then I come. Ralph was out talking this morning. He usually talks a lot. We were in the 40 and he was talking about reading the Bible as he said here. How important it was for him to read the Bible. It's a difficult task for him. But he reads the Bible. Why? Because it's been on his heart. That if he really wants to know God, if he really wants to be successful, he needs to learn more about God. Amen. And that's why one reason why they were excited about going to church back there. Acts tells us that they remained steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They came to church to learn about God. Amen. I was talking to a young preacher who had just started in a church, even much smaller than ours, on top of a mountain. In fact, they used to run over four or five people just a couple of months ago, and it was in a remote part of Oregon, way up north, sitting on a mountain all by itself, beautiful, set right by a cemetery, and everybody figured it was dead too. <laughs> <laughs> but now they got a new preacher. They see 25, and he's running 26. <laughs> and they're excited, and they're restricted. And I said, well, how does that work out? Your percentage is nobody knows where we are. <laughs> we're in the trees but they come he said now they won't go home and he said they just want to learn they want to learn they want to learn they came to church with joyful expectation of what they were going to learn about God they didn't look at going to church as a burden they didn't look at going to church as being a chore. They didn't look at church 
as a legalism, as a duty. They looked to it as an opportunity Amen. to learn more of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let me go to the house of the Lord. Why? Because I'm going to get to praise and worship my Lord and Savior who has redeemed me and saved me by his precious blood. Amen. I'm going to get to learn more about him. I'm going to hear the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. And with my brothers and my sisters, we're going to share it together. And we're going to learn more about God. And we're going to learn more about how the Holy Spirit moves within the congregation. I'm going to learn more about the intimacy of worship and worship with the body of Christ. So I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let's get there. Like us young soldiers, young soldiers that were in a hurry to get off that island. They were in a hurry. They were in a hurry to get to church. They were in a hurry to meet with one another to learn more about God. What about your joyful expectation? What do you think about Church, oh man, I got to get ready for church. Man, I got to get the kids ready. How many find Sunday morning sometimes difficult because it seems like the devil throws everything up there at the last minute? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Challenges, doesn't it? Wow. Acts 2.42 says this, and they continue steadfastly at the apostles' doctrine first one they did. We just talked about that. They wanted to learn. Listen to Jeremiah 1560. One of my favorite verses in the Old Testament about the Word of God. It says, your words, Jeremiah now speaking to God. Jeremiah says, your words were found, which means he looked for them. He was searching for them. You know, a lot of people just go to church or even meet people or don't even go to church. They're not really searching for God. They want to hear about it. And they might even tell you they believe in it or believe in God. But are you really searching for the word? What does it mean to search? Find. It means you put out some effort. effort. You have to find. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. You may have to turn over some rocks. You may have to study. If you've really studied the Word of God any length of time at all, you've spent some time searching some things out because most of us don't know all the answers. And sometimes the first guy we read, we don't like what he says, so we read somebody else. <laughs> and we don't like what he says, so you read somebody else. You read somebody else, and it doesn't make sense yet. So you may have, before I had my computer, my poor wife would wake up on in the morning, she'd find a pile of books all over the kitchen table. Oh, I, because I was searching for something that rang true in my heart. I wanted to know the answer to a particular question, the definition of a certain word, or why was this word used there? Anybody ever have a question about the Bible? <laughs> if you have it, you haven't read it. Not very long. And the Holy Spirit, your purity, curiosity within you that you would want to learn and you'd want to seek. And you'd want to turn over some rocks to find out the truth until there was a peace. And finally, the Holy Spirit says, that's it. Amen. That's it. That's where I want to go with that. But that doesn't happen when you're just flipping through the channels hitchhiking on somebody else's blessing. <laughs> you need to search it out yourself. Your words were found. I searched them out. And then I digested them. Sometimes when I'm studying, the last thing I want to do sometimes is study some things that maybe I'm pondering over. And then I think about them at night. I'm digesting what I was reading. 
And I may be a little slower than others, so it takes me a long time at night sometimes. But I've found many times when I study, I need to digest, and sometimes I'll get up and walk away and take a break because I need to think, I need to meditate, I need to be silent. For what I was reading, I need for the Holy Spirit to illuminate my mind, to turn on the lights. Anybody ever need your lights turned on? I need to understand this. And he will do that for you if you'll spend the time. He said, I found your words and I ate them. Which is referring to I digested them. And when you digest something, what happens? It becomes part of you. It nourishes you. It gives you strength. It builds you up. It gives you what you need to sustain yourself. Your words were found. And I ate them. And then listen to what he says. And your words was to me the joy. There's that word again. The joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am clothed, I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I am your child. You're my God. These are your words. And I'm hanging on to every word. And I anticipate with joyful expectation hearing your word. So your Holy Spirit can feed me what I need to be strong. How many have the joy of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Fellowship. Why do you come to church? Why was it glad to come unto me? When they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord? For fellowship. Konesia, the Greek word. Being of one, being together as one. Unity and love. Not with hypocrisy. Oh, many times people look you right in the face and tell you how much they love you and they'll go and talk about you afterwards. <laughs> it's not talking about hypocrisy. It's talking about unity and love, being of one mind and one accord. They were all in one place and in one accord. Then there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. When they were at one place and one accord. Not talking bad, no hypocrisy, no deceit, but honest, true love. They were glad. They weren't coming to church with some alternative motive to persuade somebody of their persuasion. They were going to church to worship God together with the body of Christ. They were going to church to rejoice in the presence of the Holy Spirit. They were going to church to learn about God, their Lord and Savior, their creator of heaven and earth. They were going to church to love on one another because they realized that they were all part of the body of Christ. And they were wanting, desiring to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith they had been called. Ephesians chapter 4. They were glad. I was glad when they said unto me, go to the house of the wife, because I'm going to see my buddies. <clears throat> I'm going to go see my friends. We get to share with one another about what the good Lord has done for us <clears throat> and what he's doing for us. What's happening in the world? The plot against the devil. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go on. I'm going to go praise the Lord. I'm going to go learn of the Lord. I'm going to go meet my friends and we're going to lift, lift one another. We're going to rejoice with one another. I'm not going to just pray, you know, praying by yourself is great, but praying with your group, praying with your family is even greater. Amen. We're two or three are gathered together. Amen. There I am in the midst. We ought to be excited about getting together. 
without hypocrisy, without deceit, but honest love, pure love, and glorify God. Because we are his example to the world, right? Amen. Yes. Wow. In fellowship. <clears throat> what if we walk as he is in the light? <laughs> and we have fellowship one with another. As the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. <sighs> I'm going to read it again. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with the other. As the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Wow. As we walk together. Wow. The Amplified puts it this way. But if we really are living and walking in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have true, unbroken fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses, removes us from all, everybody said all, all. Sin, sin and guilt, and guilt. keeps yeah. us cleansed <laughs> from sin and all its forms. Wow. No deceit, no hypocrisy, just pure love. Amen. I'm glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to get in that plane to take me home. Because I have joyful expectations of what I'm going to find there. I'm going to find the family of God. I'm going to find people praising the Lord. I'm going to find people digging through the scriptures and finding truths that maybe I haven't found yet and they're going to share it with me. I'm going to have fellowship with my brothers and sisters because we have Jesus Christ in common as Lord and Savior. Because we have a lot to share. We have a lot to share. We have a lot to share. In the glory of the Lord. So everybody said, I am. I am. When they said, let us go. To the, house to the house of the Lord. Of the Lord. Wow. Amen. But it's all based on unity Amen. and love. Yes. Romans 12, 9 says this. Let us love one another without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. You do it my way or you hit the highway. I wish you were all as holy as I was. <laughs> Not lacking in diligence, fervent means hot. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfast in prayer. Wow. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I got a little comment down here. It says, lost and found. How many Christians, how come so many times we find ourselves not so joyful? The devil, as it were, has stole our joy. And we go around moaning and groaning. Why does things like that happen? How can a person lose their joy? Wow. What things steal your joy? Busy? Anybody just get busy sometimes? And you just kind of get your mind off the Lord maybe? You just get busy? Maybe the trauma. Look at all what we've been going through. And the world has been going through here lately with this pandemic. So easy to get distracted and get your eyes off the Lord and start to stick your thumb in your mouth and say, woe is us, woe is me, poor is America. The election didn't go the way I wanted it to go. Oh, what are we going to do now? Uh, hey, God is still in charge. Amen. No matter who's in the White House, God is in charge. Amen. Okay? What can steal your joy? 
Well, how about priorities? How important is it for you? We've been preaching this morning on Psalms. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. How important is it for you, to you to praise and worship the Lord together? How important is it for you to study and learn more of God? God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And yet sometimes we just get too busy. Are you listening to those of you that are watching? Sometimes we're just too busy. Sometimes it seems like it can't be helped. Work. Oh, the devil would like to get you busy every Sunday. The devil would like to have you distracted every week. He would like to have something else for you to do. He'd like for you to be afraid. But perfect love casts out all fear. And we serve the Lord with gladness. How about disobedience? Any times you put yourself, someone or something before God, you're disobeying God. I'm going to say it again. Any time you put yourself, someone or something ahead of God, you're disobeying God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Hello. Amen. Disobedience. We know the standard. You shall love the Lord your God with what? All your heart, all your, all your, with everything. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then the young attorney tempted the Lord by asking, well, who's my neighbor? And Jesus didn't even answer him. He just told him a story of the good Samaritan. Do you really love the Lord? Is your joy unspeakable and full of glory? Wow. Therefore, you can fill in the blanks on this one. Everybody ready? Got a pencil? You want to fill in the blanks? If you got a pencil, you can do that. If you're home and watching, you can get a piece of paper, fill in the blanks. Yeah. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. That gets us all, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 To him that knows to do right and do it not, to him it is sin. The Amplified puts it this way. <clears throat> so any person who knows what is right to do, but does it not, but does not do it, to him it is sin. If you know the right thing to do, and you don't do it, it's sin. Whew. How many has a problem with that one? <laughs> so we went like this. <laughs> the NIV puts it this in it. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. So it's hard to miss the point, isn't it? But the good news is the Lord loves us inside our shortcomings because we are inside Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And we're covered with the blood. So if you're not in absolute rebellion, if you have accepted the Lord as personal Savior, I get good news for you. And here's a whole bunch of good news. So get out that pencil and piece of paper and write them down. The first one is Luke is Romans 8.1. Okay? Way to victory, knowing that Jesus, therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. If you will follow God, if you're sincerely following God, then fall on your knees and cry holy and say, Lord, help me. You're a child of the King. You haven't lost a bit. Your salvation is not in jeopardy. 
You belong to the king. Beloved, now are you the sons of God? You just need to tighten up yourself, your spiritual belt a little bit and say, whoa, I can lose my joy. If I'm not careful, the devil would love to steal my joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's a verse. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So how would the devil like to distract you to the point where you lose your joy? Wow. I never looked at it like that, Pastor. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk the condition, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Well, there's more good news. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God will forgive you. You're his son. You're his child. You just say, Lord, help me. Strengthen me. You see, you learn from God. Wow. 1 John 2, 1 and 2 says, My little children, these things I run unto you, that you may not sin, that you sin not. But if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus who righteous, who is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. What's that mean? He's the atoning sacrifice. He has already paid the price for your salvation. We read the verse earlier. He has purchased your salvation. You are his child. You're not in jeopardy. You're in Jesus Christ. You were baptized into Jesus Christ. If you're sincere, you serve the Lord. You're a child of the king. Call the devil a liar. Confess your sins. Tighten up your belt. And serve the Lord with gladness and with joyful expectation. <coughs> I said serve the Lord with joyful expectation. Serve the Lord with joyful expectation. Not out of fear. Not out of duty but with joyful expectation, Amen. knowing that you are complete in Jesus Christ. Yes. Wow. Remember who you are and whose you are. Amen. I said, remember who you are and whose you are. Amen. I said, remember who you are and whose you are. Amen. You're a child of the king. Right. And not just any king, but the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's my God. Amen. I said, that's my God. The Lord of lords, the king of kings, the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's my God. And I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who has saved me. Amen. Devil, you're not just pushing anybody around. That's right. Amen. This kid's connected. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Remember who you are and what he's done for you. Therefore, Romans 5, 1 and 2. If you've been around here much, you've heard this verse before. You might as well memorize it. Therefore, having been justified by faith, because I have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, because I believe that he went to the cross for my redemption, because I believe that he rose again for my justification, because I believe that he is the Son of the living God, because I have invited him into my heart and asked him to be Lord and Master and forgive me of my sins. I am a child of the King and I have been justified by faith. Have you been justified by faith? Have you been justified by faith? Then you should have joyful expectations not only of your present state but of your future. Because perfect love casts all fear and I have nothing to fear. Because I'm in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having been justified by faith, we have peace. It's an interesting word in the Greek because it means peace as we think about it, tranquility and peace in quietness, being at rest 
and sincere and relaxed, being at peace, no strife. We've been at peace with God. There's no conflict between me and God. Amen. I'm at peace with God as opposed to being at war with God. See, a lot of Christians are at war with God. You should have the peace of God and be right. at peace with God. Amen. And when you accept the Lord, you possess the peace of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You're not only at peace, but you have a supernatural, divine Amen. peace because you have the peace of God. Amen. Every Christian, every Christian, raise your hand. Oh, I'm going to get you now. <laughs> All right. Who lives in your heart? Jesus. Jesus. Then you have the peace of God in your heart. Amen. Amen. You think Jesus is at peace with God? <clears throat> There's a deep, settled peace in my soul. There's a deep, settled peace in my soul. Amen. Thank you, Lord. His name is Jesus. Yes. <clears throat> and he's changing me through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, this is part of that joyful expectation of your future. I believe, according to God's word in the book of Corinthians, that he is changing me into his likeness. Amen. Step by step. Yes. Precept upon precept. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit that resides in me. That's my joyful expectation Amen. to be like Jesus. Amen. I said it's my joyful expectation to be like Jesus. Amen. Do you believe you're being changed? Oh yeah. If you've been listening, you should be happy. That's right. If you've been listening, you should be full of joy. Amen. Knowing that God loves you. Thank you, Lord. He loves you. Don't you hate it when a pastor says, and with this I'm closing. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes and prays and repents. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with our God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. I stand. Everybody said, I, I stand, stand. With, joyful with joyful expectations. expectations. No Know what God, what God is, doing is doing in me. In me. Wow, give God a hand. Yeah. How come to your guitar if you will? Wow. To whom we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Wow. Wow. You know, it's your life. It's your life. Are you who you want to be? Are you where you want to be? In the Lord? It's your life. God loves you. And he wants you to be like him. Be holy as I am holy. But the only way that happens is if you're in Christ Jesus. All things are possible through Christ Jesus. 
but I can do nothing without him. Right. All you need to do to have joyful expectation is to give yourself to the Lord. Pray with me. Father, I give myself away to you wholly and completely with joyful expectation of what is to come in our relationship. I accept you, Lord, as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Huh? Yeah. Got, brother? Prayer. Prayer. Are you doing prayer? Yeah. I just prayed. Oh, that's okay. That was sweet, sweet spirit, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll do the close. <clears throat> this is the day. Stay with me. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. And I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day.